Now I want to show some reactions to this. Um, so let's let's look at uh, this one tweet. This shows a screenshot of Ron Compius, and Ron Compius is the Washington bureau chief of the Jewish Telegraphic Agency. And let's take a look at what he had to say about this. So he tweets, "Scrambling to find my BlackBerry shares." That's his response. And Ali Harb. Uh, quote tweets to that and says, a little girl was killed. Civilians across Lebanon were literally terrorized with pagers exploding in grocery stores, barber shops, and all sorts of urban spaces, injuring countless innocent people. But the crass memification of Israeli terrorism is socially accepted in the U.S. I would say that's a good point. Can you imagine a journalist uh, making a joke about uh, an explosion that killed Israelis? Oh my God, you're not allowed to say anything that's even remotely like blaming Israel. If you're in the mainstream media, you're not even allowed to like call Palestinians human. Right. You're not even allowed to use the word occupation, right. let alone celebrate any act of even self-defense, by the way, against Israeli soldiers. Like yeah. if somebody in the mainstream media were to celebrate an act of self-defense by a Palestinian against Israeli soldiers, like trying to murder their family, they would be immediately fired. Yeah. Um, Arabs certainly aren't allowed to celebrate the people they view as resistance fighters across the region. They're completely censored from Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, if they dare do that. Meanwhile, my For You page today has been just a tsunami of Israelis and their supporters making memes out of this, celebrating this, cackling about this. I mean, it's really disgusting. You know, they accuse us of celebrating death and, you know, celebrating murder and celebrating terrorism. I mean, just like every Israeli accusation is a confession, that is, accusation is a confession. They literally celebrate death. We've seen them do it since October 7th, since they've been killing people in Gaza. And I saw a number of Israelis doing it today. I mean, they were even, I even got like a bunch of Israelis and their supporters fantasizing about me being killed yeah. in one of these explosions. Like, it's just, it's sick. They're we sick. Yeah, it is sick. And uh, we actually have uh, a couple of those tweets. This is not a particularly high profile person, but I think it's worth showing. Then we'll get to an actually high profile person. So classical Lib Mott, uh, who has an Israeli flag in his, uh, you know, um, emoji in his in his uh, handle. So you tweeted out, Rania, not a pager attack, a terrorist attack. And he quote tweets that and says, surprisingly, Rania was not caught up in this operation today. Anything you want to say to that person, by the way, who was also harassing, like, low-key? Just, um, you're sick, dude. Get some help. Like, seriously, get offline and get some help and stop fantasizing about people like me being, like, blown to bits by Israeli terrorism. Like, get some, seriously, go to therapy. And now let's take a look at this other tweet. And this is from a woman you've had uh, interesting interactions with before. Uh, <laughs> you were on the uh, Pierce Morgan show with her. And she is like an Israeli shill, I guess like an Israeli Hasbaris. She's from, uh, of course, L.A. and uh, Indigenous to the Middle East, all the way from L.A. East. Yeah, you'll be able to see from the way she, what she looks like. This is Emily Schrader, a journalist at Israeli Ynet News. So she responded to your tweet. I guess your tweet was pretty powerful on your uh, part, Rania. My like, not pager attack. <laughs> yeah, not a pager attack, a terrorist, attack, a terrorist attack. attack. They don't, like, these people yeah. are upset because it's true. If it weren't true what you were saying, they'd ignore it. So yeah. Emily writes, guys, seriously, though, can we just have a moment of silence for Hezbollah fangirl Rania? She's having a really bad day because her best friend in Hezbollah had an explosive day, if you know what I mean. And then... That's that, like, no one can ever, there's never a good time to use that emoji, by the way. The, like, laughing so hard you're crying. It's never good. It's never okay. And what's the no, other yeah. one? What's the other one? It's a pager. a pager. It's a pager. That's adorable. Emily, yeah, you are pager. so, you, like, represent is the best of Israel, the celebration of life, the celebration of explosive pagers that literally it's kill true. people, including children. And also, people are going to have to have amputations. I mean, sometimes I... We, we lose track of when we hear like wounded. I think lots of times we're relieved. It's like, oh, only this number of people were killed and the rest of them are wounded. Wounded can mean like losing limbs. Yeah. Or like your face being shattered. I mean, yeah. if you were like yeah. looking at a beeper. I mean, look, I, again, she needs help. Like yeah, you help. need help. Like you are also like, maybe you're a little homicidal because that, I, to laugh at that, like, listen, 
war, even if we're going to call this a war, even if we're going to call this a war, I'm not happy anyone is dying. Right. Like this is, this is what really, I cannot understand. I cannot ever relate to. I mean, there's a lot of things about Israelis I cannot relate to. And one of them is this like excitement and glee about the horrors they're causing. Because even when Israelis get killed, like, I don't want anyone to die, dude. Like, I don't want anyone to die. I want this all to be over. I want your stupid settler apartheid state. I want your regime to fall so all this violence can end because it is the source of all this violence. And I'm sick of it. Everyone's sick of it, except apparently for people like her who think it's hilarious. Like, you're a sick person if you think it's hilarious that a bunch of people were terrorized across the country today with exploding devices, with literally IEDs, like across the country, thousands of them, just exploding at random in random places, literally a terrorist attack. And she's laughing about it. And she's, you know, she's not going to face any consequences for that. Of course not. None. 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 And I want to ask you, Rania, as someone based in Beirut, what are people that you know um, there, what are they reporting? What are they feeling, experiencing? What are people saying who you're in touch with? They're... They're absolutely horrified. This is really scary. I mean, Lebanon's been living kind of on the precipice of war. Well, always lives on the precipice of war, unfortunately, but especially since October 7th, October 8th. Um, And there's been a few really scary moments, but this, you know, it's been sort of contained to certain parts of Lebanon. Not that that makes it okay, but this was just super, like, again, a bunch of explosive devices going off at random in like crowded spaces where just everybody is. Um, it was really scary. The hospitals were packed with people today. Uh, doctors were completely overwhelmed because this was a mass casualty event. People were donating blood as much as possible because there was lots of blood needed. Um, it was just, it was really scary. It also like, you know, rep, you know, people in Lebanon are already traumatized for so many reasons, but I think, you know, the Beirut port blast was one of those other sort of situations that was quite right. widespread were, and just like indiscriminate. I was there for that. Um, and so people were making uh, comparisons to that. Uh, one person said, you know, everybody knows somebody who lost a finger because they do. I mean, it's just horrible. It's absolutely horrific. Tomorrow there's been like a strike called by the late, by like Lebanon's main labor union and schools will be off. And it's just like, a, it's, it's, a, it's a real, you know, devastating day. I mean, it's devastating. Obviously this was a blow uh, to Hezbollah in many ways, right? But it was also a blow to the country. This was an attack on an entire country. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's the sentiment and anger, a lot a lot of anger uh, across Lebanon today. Um, and you know what? A lot of, you know, I would say a lot of politicians who don't necessarily, aren't necessarily on the side of Hezbollah came out and expressed their support for those who were injured and martyred and, you know, their support for also resistance against Israel. So, I mean, it, it unified the country a little bit, I guess, except yeah. for the you know typical actors that, that hate Hezbollah, continue to hate Hezbollah. But the point is, um, this was really like an unacceptable, horrific moment. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure what's going to come after it, but just a devastating day for Lebanon. And what's really disgusting is, 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 is this, if this had happened, in any Western capital, it would just be all you hear about in the most disgusting way. And instead, the way it was covered was like you kind of saw the mainstream media in the U.S. sort of marveling at Israeli ingenuity. Uh, it's so right. brave. Right. It's so brave so, to, so to great. movie trap yeah, and badass. people's cell phones yeah. and pagers. Yeah, so badass. So James Bond. Um, so yeah. impressive. That, that's all they can talk about. That's the way they're framing it. Yeah. Uh, people's lives were destroyed today. People's lives are being destroyed every single day by Israel. Like It's like we can't keep up with them. Um, right. But it just keeps spreading. It keeps spreading. And it's just, you know, at least people in a space, and I'll include myself among them, of just like, I don't know how much longer this can go on. I don't know how much longer this is sustainable. Um, And I don't know how much more people can take. 